Several weeks ago, a meteorologist in Atlanta received death threats for cutting into the masters for tornado warnings. Multiple tornadoes ended up touching down that day in Alabama and Georgia. So in this 10 News special report, meteorologist Chris Michaels spoke with two experts to explain why we still cut into programming when there are other ways of getting those weather warnings out there. So. Chris, I, you know, a lot of people are asking this question. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that's not just required of us, as you two very well know, it still proves to be an effective way of communication. And our mission is not to aggravate you or to promote a self-image. Rather, it's to provide information that could save you, your loved ones, or your property. The return to glory. As storms fired up in Alabama and Georgia during the Masters, Dr. Myers from the University of Alabama knew that could only spell trouble for local TV stations. They're going to get into that wall-to-wall -wall coverage issue and people are going to go nuts. While the minority take to the keyboard to voice their aggression, live tornado coverage is still a necessity. And for us, that necessity became clear as recent as three weeks ago. There are indications that we may have a tornado on the ground just east of Rocky Mount. And we actually talked to some people that were in the path of the, uh, the, the tornado in Franklin County uh, who said they heard about it by watching TV. I'm hoping that that partnership together may have saved some lives. Steve Caton from the National Weather Service in Blacksburg visited with the Andersons shortly after their home was destroyed by April 19th's EF3 tornado. Dolores Anderson told 10 News off camera that it was because of our continuous coverage that she sought shelter in the basement just two minutes before her home was destroyed. Live tornado coverage is not just important, it is required by the FCC. FCC rules require broadcasters and cable operators to make local emergency information accessible to persons who are deaf or hard of hearing and to persons who are blind or have visual disabilities. This means having a crawl and someone explaining the threat to the public is required. The frustration may actually have to do, though, with how frequently you see tornadoes in your area. The real issue is how sensitized is your community to the fact that these things can happen. And if you're not you know, familiar with it, you're not used to it, then it's going to be more aggravating. Despite the aggravation, Dr. Meyer's research has shown that the majority of people in the path of a storm still turn to the television for updated information. So we see that over and over again. No matter how else they got the message, they're going to turn to the television. The reason is actually pretty simple. People want to know location and timing. And that's where an app can fall short, leaving many wanting more information. And so when the broadcast meteorologists come on, and when we issue tornado warnings, and they, they show visually, here's the storm, here's zoom in on the map, here's where all these towns are in the path, you need to take up, this is real. Now some will claim that a tornado siren is all they need. But that has its own flaws too, according to Dr. Myers. And the reality is those were built for outdoor warning and they're not gonna penetrate walls, you're not gonna hear them at night. Now, of course, it's important to have multiple ways to get weather warnings, but it's also important that we let you know of our intentions before severe weather strikes. 10 News does alert viewers ahead of time in case we need to cut into programming. We push out alerts through our apps as well as on Facebook when we're not on the air. Live in studio, I'm meteorologist Chris Michaels, 10 News, working for you.